You know, a friend of mine, um, a friend of mine said he, he was he was conversing with a Russian, who said, um, you know, what is it? Is it better to be free? What was it? it, it what was the word? Absolutely free, but you'll be known to die or be in prison for eternity. And I'm a, and that's a, that's a common thing for for against religion, but it's actually kind of a, a a false paradigm, because it assumes that being in prison, someone else telling you what to do is a bad thing. But if you look at the, hey, sorry, I'm getting a little preach here. If you if you look at the like father son paradigm, the relationship in the family, and building up a family, and what things how things are intended to be, your father's intent for you is not for you to, you know him just living for himself that's when the world starts to end the whole intent the, the whole intent is to bolster you and build you up and raise you and we have this you see a little baby you just want to take care of it it's etched onto us to have this kind of thing so being put into a set of rules assumes that we have the perspective of the whole thing it assumes, it assumes you have a transcendent perspective like this is how things are when if you're in the jail cell you don't understand this stuff and then you perceive it as a jail cell you could just perceive it as a nursery you know what i mean you got to be careful you don't put things in bad perspectives when they the evidence around you doesn't justify it we go to our secret place and i dream for the two of us after mother has done the rounds, Naomi waits for the footsteps to fade and climbs into bed. All clear, she whispers, harsh and dramatic, like one of the old stairs. I stifle and laugh, and she breaks with a giggle. The hairs on my neck prickle at her voice. They are rushing over my ear. I smile, open my eyes, and we go deeper, deeper. Descend, oh no. Did you jump off the bridge already? Come on, man. Give me a chance. What is your name? No. Mother Elia's voice cracks like a switch. Again, what is your name? Uh, I don't know how to answer. I need more context than this. Why would I lie? But I don't know what the truth is, so I, I feel like I'm being set up. Let's go with Maria. The corruption might stop. be stopped yet. No shout comes, but I catch a smirk on her face. The world is not made for people like you and I. We are different. We are special. We must take makes us special. Our blessing, our wings, and transcend. There's pride assuming that you can kick the doors down of heaven right there. We, we are more than what we are made of, and for that we must feel pain. That's bad logic. We forsake ourselves. We must obey. We must show thanks. Only then can we be joyous. You are thankful for this joy, right, Maria? Mother Olivia turns. I can't help but notice the bruise on her left cheek. In that moment, time freezes. My mind blanks and my chest is hollow. I only feel a fear and a sadness for where we've been and what's to come. I'm unable to avert my gaze before Mother strikes. What? Yes, Mother, I am thankful. Dude, this game's getting a little darker than I, I, I intended. I don't, I don't know. But this is the thing, though. Like, if you have a, a perspective and a worldview that kind of, you know... Is supposed to give meaning to even stuff like this. Like, where is Jesus in suffering? Why does God allow suffering? Right? We can answer these kind of things. Get through game form, right? The sanctum's walls are tall and metallic. On sunny days, reflections are so blinding, everything becomes a haze. It's okay. The haze is all we've ever known. The walls mark the edge of our lives. Nothing in, nothing out. Mother says we need the walls to keep the nightmares out. Even though we can't dream, they can still hurt us. So this seems like a horror movie right now, where there's no good ending. At night, you can hear them walking. I have to really acknowledge the thump. Massive and lumbering. Living as nothing. I've never seen one, but their faces seem etched in my mind. Sinewy, intense, formless, and unknowing. Sharp and fragile. Let's go with formless and unknowing. Just the thought terrifies me. Anna, right here. What? Before I realize what's happening, I crash into Naomi. So my name is Anna. We fall. So I gave in. Are you okay? She looks up with a crooked grin. Her eyes shine like a green marble beaming right at me. Yeah, I'm good. So effortless. So assured. Naomi never lets anything 
Oh, never know that's anything like this phaser. I thought it was her talking. When I'm with her, I feel a bit of that warmth. She makes me feel unstoppable. Are you okay? I'm sorry I bumped. No, it's okay, really. Any bit of worry that was in Naomi's face vanishes. I'm the one Naomi apologizes to, but she does it so much when she's around me. Not that she has to, but I, I don't want to stop her. It's cute. As we get up, Naomi puts her arm around me, and my pain disappears. Now can you tell me another dream? In our space, nothing can hurt us. It's a safe space. I sit down, or sit Naomi down before taking my place across from her. We look, lock eyes, and breathe. In. Out. In. Drifting. Falling. Deeper. <laughs> Get to choose my down? Oh my goodness. Deeper. Deeper. I'll choose, I'll, make, I'll go three, two, one. How deep we going, yo? Am I choosing the difficulty of this uh, of this game, or is the game turned into like a let the water consume to a, a a giant cycle in Buddhistic nihilism? Where are we where are we going? We're going to dots. This game requires more coffee. Days pass in and out like goes through the halls. We meander along, aimless and scared, only knowing the course set before us. Father says we're destined for greatness. Mother keeps us in line. So father's the motivational, mom's the physical. All right, morning roll call. I see my classmates file up. I make sure to get there early because I enjoy catechisms. Are you kidding me? Let's just bring more blasphemy into the world. But because I don't want to be singled out more than I already am, which whatever unlucky sister father has his sights on goes down the list, marking off as we regurgitate our given names and creeds. Natalie. Christopher. Sarah, Sierra, Jonathan, Lily. The pen reaches my name. I've rehearsed this a thousand times, but my lips still falter. M Maria. The pen gets subtler every time. Maybe that's the point. Till there's nothing left. Erase and erase. Or maybe I'm just paranoid. The pen reaches Naomi's title. Per usual, she's stumbling into line, falling, failing to hide her tardiness. She stands erect, patting her shirt to flatten the wrinkle she's trying so hard to appear together. No, I mean, she catches herself. Davy, here. I feel that sting again. She's so much better at this than me. But Mother knows what she did. She'll call Naomi to one of her private meetings to show how dark her feathers have become and berate her about purity, even if punishment only adds to the guilt. Though somehow I trust it'll all be okay in the end. That, that sounds like something Naomi would say. It will all be okay in the end. Optimism in the face of adversity. Floating weightless, I open my eyes and Naomi is drifting with me. Down, down into the darkness. We are dreaming. I grab her hand and we land gently one foot, then the other. The surface is wet and shimmering on top. An endless ocean that glints into the void. Slowly stars appear in the sky. One here, another there. They are faint and flickering. But that their shining gives us hope and warmth. One day we'll fly. One day we'll see stars. Naomi's eyes twinkle at the sight, her mouth agape in wonder. This is kind of a... So she reaches the heavens, hoping to catch a star as it falls. This is a... Uh, you know, dreams are... are it's, hard to, it's hard to paint a picture inside it until I know the whole context of this um, very nihilistic world. She looks back at me in time freezes, because right now, Naomi being the optimist is, is the, the person that's kind of going contrary to reality. Why would you believe something that's such a joke if your life is nothing but pain and your father and mother kind of model something that's not really there unless you have something inside of you telling something different but that would be contrast to nihilism she looks back at me and time freezes now concentrate i never the feelings going through my body thousands of senses both real and imaginary that i breathe life into with my words a small light shows beneath the surface as i whisper it grows until it envelops all the ocean we see the light rises the water breaks and though the waves are tall they pass over us like a gentle breeze the excitement is Palpable. Palatable. I didn't read the word. <laughs> I take it, grasp it, bring it to my chest and sprinkle it to the lake. Glittering dust turns to grains of sand. The sand gathers into a mass and soon we are standing on the shore of a magnificent island. 
Gasp escapes our lips. Naomi looks at me. I want to go here. Will you take me someday? I smile and exclaim, yes, and we'll climb the trees. Trees of all different kinds springing from the ground. Some tall, some leafy, all green and beautiful. Like the ones we only know from the picture book. Franz, Sway, Franz, and Russell. We climb, we see, we gather the fruits and roll on the leaves. And we'll gaze at the sky. No more haze, no more gray. White clouds rolling in the breeze, protecting us and granting us shade. A sun so brilliant and warm, you don't need your robes, but never overbearing. Letting our wings out to shine, letting us soar with the birds. And we'll smell the flowers, because we're still on the island. Sweet and soft, dotting the land, poking from the gra grass to say hello. Picked and nestled into dazzling bouquets, crowned from you and me. Every color we can imagine, even the ones we've never seen. And we'll swim in the water. Cool, blue, lovely, and clear. The fish are our guide. Wondrous and free. This this paints a better picture of what reality should be. The, <clears throat> the other one seems like a, a stark violation of purpose. And kind of kind of hits you right here. As if it shouldn't be that way. Nothing tying us to our mortal flesh. All sound erased. No more lectures or punishment. No more sin. We can dream together. But that's the reality. It seems like the reality... The longing for a distant world, like that one, seems more real than the current one we're in temporarily, 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 temporally inside. A dream of our own, no one to stop us, together. Naomi and my name is Anna. The birds we planted in the sky sway in the wind. Their feathers drop as they fly, drifting, floating, falling, they envelop us. Gentle as snow. Whoosh. Naomi realizes, releases her hand. She's breathing heavily. Gasping for air, she grabs at her chest, eyes wide in terror. She doubles over and I cry at her side. Naomi, breathe. Breathe. Tears roll, but no voice comes. Leave this game. But we long for this stuff, right? If you, if you if you worship death, if if you don't have that dream perspective, the presence of Father has always felt, even if never seen. But if you're not aiming for something outside of this life, the way things should be, then the reality is the pain, and the pain never ends. The assumption of pain is that pain ends, and you move on, and you heal. But if you worship death, if you're not worshiping life, life beyond this one, because we are all doomed to die. And if you only have this limited perspective and you keep that as an absolute truth, this is all our life is, you don't look beyond, then pain is going to be felt way more than the hope for life after. Sisters scramble, a dark cloud covers the children, our feathers wilt, even Mother Olivia's on edge. The shouting never seems to end, and when it does, there's no relief to come. Because Mother takes it out on us. Naomi comes back that night, crying like I've never seen. She hides her wings, she slinks into bed. So these are like angel characters? She only does that when something is really wrong. I want to help, and Naomi just shakes and murmurs. I don't know what's wrong. I can't reach her. I am so tiny. I wake to Naomi as Naomi's eyes staring at mine. They pierce the darkness, even as they're haze, hazy with tears. She grabs me and struggles to squeeze out her words. I found a way out. And I found a way out, but I need your help. Please help me. I need to get out of here. She didn't have to say more, but I can only smile when she says, I want to have a dream of our own. I'm kind of liking where this is going. One of the, the, the I guess, uh, more sensitive stories, like when you read, read about your own life struggles, obviously if you're watching this video, if you actually made it this far, and you have a life of your own, and you're privileged enough to be, have a computer, and food, and shelter, Reading stories like these kind of cry out to our heart. I mean, there's two things we can do with it. One, ignore it. Well, three things. Two, become numb to it. Vicariously, I live while the whole world dies. So say his man or Keenan from Tool in, in the song of Schism. Or we can do something about it. What are you doing about it, right? Stories like this do exist. Child uh, pro pornography and trafficking have never been higher in history due to technology. Naomi listens for the rounds to end, then crawls to my bed. Come on. We're off, back to our secret place. I see Naomi down, take my place across from her as we enter our sleep. I take us outwards instead of in, to the sanctum hazy walls. I picture them, tall and chrome, with our figures lurking beneath. I search the ground for the tiniest of imperfections, gathering them in my head like doubts and memories. 
The cracks come together to form the picture in my head, a gap, an emptiness forming through my will. So I push, I strain, forcing myself harder than I ever have, dragging Naomi and I towards the darkness. A lone shadow on a sunny day, taking hold, wrapping our bodies in, out. So transcendent meditation to get, rid, get away from the, the physical. I scream a silent scream that cracks the world around us. It all shatters vision by vision, leaving only Naomi, the world, and me. A weight lifts, and we can open our eyes. We're looking back on the other side of the wall. We've escaped. Wow. That easy, huh? Everything was so immediate. Everything was so real. And as soon as the air hit our faces, it was like Naomi transformed back to who I knew. We run, jumping around the grass. It's so inviting. Light bounces off every surface, the lunar glow wrapped around us. There are trees and flowers and stones and rivers, dirt and sand holding us to the heavens. Our feathers shine in our hearts. We can feel the cage being lifted. I turn to Naomi and look, into her, and look her in the eyes. I'm ready to dream. And we let ourselves get lost in each other. So happy. So free. Too innocent, too naive. Which reality would you rather have? I'd rather say the innocent naive is the one where shallowness and pain dictate reality as opposed to exploration and relishing in each other. Gravity. Sol solemnity. Electricity. Dang. Or bang, sorry. <laughs> Stripped from reverie. Bang. What? is reality. Bang. Anna, wake up. They found us. She pulled me up in points. In the distance, three figures. Over the hill. Stalking. Haunting. And beside them? Mother. Wait, wait. Did we fight? We fought that character. Among them. Within them. Controlling them. She motions and points, sealing our doom. My insides turned to stone as Naomi snaps. Run! The nightmare is upon us. Naomi's words make my heart jump. But I don't want to go. I don't want to leave her. Go, Anna. I've got this. I said I'd protect you, didn't I? And she did. She promised. I want to say something, but a force pushes me back. So I go. Faster. Faster. I'll choose this faster. 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 My legs hurt, but I can't fall cannot falter. I guess this is the correct faster. I have to be strong for her. A flash of light bathes the horse in white. I look behind me and there. It's amazing what happens when you live your life as if someone died for you, right? Naomi. That's her! Dude! She was the white one, okay. Her wings more brilliant than I've ever seen. She jumped before, so maybe that was a narrative of hers at the end of the game. She's beautiful. Shining in the darkness, Naomi brings hope. She sows discord among the nightmares. They recoil in pain as Naomi's light hits, blood leaking from every crack, smoke rising from every wound. And Naomi's light only grows stronger and str- No. 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 <laughs> Have you ever seen an angel die? Yeah, doesn't happen. I don't think. She 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 did well up until a point. I don't want to live anymore. Yeah, there we go. But she died for you. Sorry, man. You you don't know that to her. Rage, sorrow, bloodlust. Crumble to dust as I shred their brittle bodies, one after another. Okay, this is teenage rage. Let's get them. Doesn't help. It doesn't help. It's the thing about rage and unforgiveness. Being vindictive. In the Quran, they, they go over this a lot. You don't have to, but in uh, reading um, Malcolm X's autobiography, you don't have to forgive. They don't teach turn, turn the other cheek. You can be resentful. Hold on to your rage. Mother must die. Okay. It's, it's Binding of Isaac 2.0. Yep, I'm not reading this. <laughs> so we destroyed the world, but not before Mother dies. 
Why has it got to be? What is with this world and always seeking? Like w women seem to be uh, the enemy seems to have a hard on for women. Like he really wants to just destroy females before the males. Her final cry, pathetic and meek, floats into the air, scattered white and black dust. And then the game froze. I accepted this. I deserve this. The ground takes me. Only the darkness remains. So we'll put a lot of time into this, man. I'm still wondering where the end game is. Like the philosophy of this whole thing. Because, I mean, when it's all text, we haven't, we've done like 10 solid minutes of texting and reading. Deep in my body, deep in myself, floating and falling. When you, when you, when you start to live and start to, like, I'm an, I, I, I'm an encourager according to my spiritual gift set and just seeing how my life is. When you start to, instead of living here and you live out, like they say it's, uh, in the political, the common political, uh, uh, counter from a transcendent perspective is that there's no left or right. There's only up or down. I would actually counter that even and say there's no, it's not even up or down. It's more in or out. If you are, you know, partially narcissistic, you'll live here. This is why evolution survival of the fittest makes sense. You live for yourself. But if you live out and just get rid of yourself, don't focus on yourself, Christ tried to advocate this so much. It turns out you're, when you're a servant to all, you become more of, a, more of yourself when you become a servant to other people. Let the water consume. Did I jump in the water? Dude, wings, let's go. My vision started to return. Rather, rather not wings. Is it Naomi? It's amazing how like something like that when she said, "You never see an angel die." Have you ever seen an angel die? Don't even question it, right? Get that feeling where you have an image of something that's awesome and it gets violated and destroyed. It's it like that's wrong. It just flips on you. But to me, that's awesome. Like no one even questions that thing. That, that kind of philosophy as if something is designed and made as it should be and we have a reason etched in our mind that this is how things should be and when it's violated that we, we have an overwhelming sense of wrongness something must happen to fix this unfortunately we kind of tend to go down the darker side like violence should be used to solve violence because that's the darker tendency of, of people violations should be used to answer violation when the opposite's true, which is what Christ teaches. You know, forgiveness is the only way to heal that kind of stuff. Healing, restoration is what's what should be more focused on. Um, and the only way you can get that is, is, is through Christ to God. He's the only one that taught that. No one else can live like her. Anyway, I focus as hard as I can, picturing her, her eyes, her smile, that awkward way she walked, legs too long for her body, and shoulders slightly too broad. It made her so insecure, but she never showed it. So fearless, self-assured, if only on the outside. So perfect to me, Come back. Please come back. Come back to me. She takes shape in my mind, in my arms. A weight brings me down further and further together. I'm here standing on an endless ocean. I can see the shore ahead of me and the ethereal sun half remembered. But you are here in my arms. Naomi, I've finally done it for you. I made it. Aw. A dream of our own. So with the, the point of this game was just to get to this comic book? Kind of? Sort of. Fear not, child, for there is salvation to be found, even of your kind. The mark has claimed another. Does it always have to be like this? Is that Naomi? May the old son have mercy. May the null sun have mercy. A trauma reveals itself at the center of the world. You have been marked. Others may see you differently, as the world will reject you. I understand that. But maybe we can finally awaken. Maybe.
Okay. Ignores defense but cannot break. Mid range, fast. Why would I ever choose anything else? I guess, uh. Wow. And we have our laser beam. Okay. And then we have our traditional beat the crap out of your face paradigm. I like it. Hello. Scorned. Oh my goodness. Ye oh, what is this? Reduce all stats, but increase max VP by 20? Wow. Face the corruption with courage and grace. Cannot be unequipped. Marked. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Less damage. That seems so valuable, but like... I think we'll be okay with reduced stats. Dude, it's a, it's a new way to play. Okay. Greatly reduce attack stamina use at max health. That might be helpful. It costs four, though. Paradigm shift. Now we're interested. The indicator's not interested. We can't break, so that's useless. Dodge enemy attacks to replenish stamina. Boom, boom. Now I'm thinking, like, this probably just ain't worth it, honestly. At least not right now. Unless we find more virtues, then it might be. So we just had that dream. I don't know where the game started though. Maybe it's this is just a different cycling. We're already max level. Okay, we can't travel. Let's see. Let's look at the familiar garden real quick before we end this. Do we? Okay. I, I was thinking maybe there'd be something here. I love you, my little bu little buddy. <laughs> all right um dude that'll do it for this one what a long episode I, I think i'm gonna break this up so anyway once again thanks for watching you guys ready to click like one subscribe if you want to see more in the future i'm gonna go through this a second time because i thought that was a really neat um kind of segue into what the meaning of the game was and it's kind of like an up and down nihilistic sense of the world um of the word anyway and uh i don't know so final thoughts for the next episode. Uh, uh, all this kind of pain and suffering that exists in the world. How do you make sense of it? I mean, my... my uh, I have a Judeo-Christian worldview. So pain ends. The assumption is pain ends. And pain carves you out. Pain is a, like if I'm going to write a book, um, it's going to be on the concept of pain. Pain is either separation or threat of separation. Um, you could see pain immediately when you saw that angel dying, right? At least, especially in the character, like somebody she loved getting violated. Separation or threat of separation. But the assumption is pain ends. We, we are given examples of this. But death is interesting. Because death is a separation. But if you don't assume healing, like you gather from the rest of pain throughout our lives, you don't assume separation, you don't assume carving out for a certain for reason behind it, then you're, everything gets shattered, full stop. There's no such thing as like transcendence. Like, there has to be something after this. Our, our soul longs for it. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for giving me a hearing, and I'll see you next episode. Take care.